Hey, I'm Alexa. I am one of the Mountain School instructors and I'm a time traveler and I'm here working on the ACOTUS project. I'm on a mission to learn a little bit more about the cultural history of the Upper Skagit by talking to some historically important people. People have been living and traveling in the Upper Skagit for such a long time, for thousands of years, starting with many indigenous tribes, including the Swinomish, the Sakaswiatl, the Upper Skagit, and the Ingwakatma, among many others, who have been living on and stewarding this land since time immemorial. This place has such a long, rich history, but today we're only going to be able to explore a small slice of that. Today's historically important person is... Lucinda Davis! Are you ready? Let's go! Well, it looks like we arrived here safely in 1918. Excellent. Now we just have to look around and locate Lucinda Davis. But my resources say she should be around here somewhere. Look, there she is. Hello. You're gonna scare all the fish. My apologies. We were just hoping that we might have a word with you. Are you looking to spend the night at the roadhouse? You know, I think we still have a couple beds. No need. We won't be staying that long. We're working on a project. Uh, we've been sent here to interview people, collect their stories, and find out a little bit more about what life was like here in the Skagit Valley. Would you mind answering a few questions for us? All right, sure. What do you want to know? Would you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what brought you here to the Skagit Valley? I was born to a nice enough family uh, in Boston in 1848. Yeah, and when I turned 18, I decided that I wanted to continue my education. Education was important in my family. So I uh, ended up going to Wyoming Seminary just down the way in Pennsylvania. And that was kind of rare at the time, actually. There are not a lot of women that went on to get their college degree. Wait a minute. I thought I had calibrated our time machine to arrive at your homestead. Do we have to travel down valley to see it? Oh, we are uh, here at my homestead. This here is Cedar Bar. After a flood took 
took away my brother's original homestead in 1897, carried off most of our belongings, we moved up here and Cedar Bar has been home ever since. Why don't you come up to the homestead? We'll sit underneath the covered porch. Let's continue our interview. Could you tell us a little bit more about what life is like for you out here at Cedar Bar? Well, I tell you, we get along just fine here. We run the roadhouse for mostly miners and trappers coming through here and we provide them a dry spot to lie down and rest and hot food to fill up their bellies. You know, this valley's provided pretty well for us, this valley and God, of course. We can catch all kinds of trout down in the Skagit River and in the summertime, during berry season, we go out and gather currants and huckleberries. Salmon berries are actually in season right now. It has been hard work clearing this land, you know, cutting all the trees down, getting the roadhouse built here. We had to get pasture land ready for our pony and our cows, and we were also planting a garden at the same time. I gotta tell you, I've been blessed, and I'm telling you, truly blessed to have my three kids here to help me out. You know, my dear Desi, she'd do laundry and help out with the cooking, and my sons, Glee and Frankie, you know, they'd run errands, take care of the animals. You know, they even built a hydroelectric plant up on the creek, just up from here, and that hydroelectric plant powers lights here at the roadhouse. We're actually one of the few places in the valley that have electricity. You know, most folks are still using oil lamps. Do you have electric lights in the place that you live? Huh, yeah. I don't know what people do if they don't have a nice strong flowing creek in the backyard and a couple of handy suns to build a water wheel. Well, electricity is a little more complicated than that at the present. Do you know where your electricity comes from? I mean, in my mind, everyone would be making this switch. What with the fire danger from oil lamps? You know, do you know this place burned down? Yeah, not too long after we first built the hotel. And Glee and I were the only two folks left living up here on the homestead. And we had snow that came late October, 18 inches overnight. And we looked at each other and said, we gotta get the animals down valley before winter stays here for good. You know, it was pretty snowy, so we were going on the goat trail there, made it down to our neighbor's place where we were going to stash the animals for the winter, and we stayed overnight on account of the trail being so snowy and treacherous. Woke up the next morning and started heading home, and what do you know, this miner walks up to us with a note. Says that he and his buddy stayed at our hotel last night. You know, we always keep it stocked for wayward travelers. If we're not around, there's food and firewood and stuff. And he said that he and his friends had burnt the whole place to the ground overnight. He also says on this note, all three of them had signed and said that they would come back in the spring and help us rebuild. But do you think that happened? Wow, you've been through a lot during your time here in the Skagit Valley. How have you seen this place change since you first arrived? The biggest change I've heard of late is uh, this talk about building dams on the Skagit River here. Yeah, just last year actually, same year that the Forest Service finally granted me my permit to officially own this homestead here at Cedar Bar. That same year, a man working for the city of Seattle came up here and got a permit to build dams on the Skagit River to power the city of Seattle. Now, I just don't quite get it. You know, Seattle is over 100 miles from here. Hydroelectricity is all well and good. I mean, we have our generator here. But it seems like Seattle must have rivers closer to it, and they could dam those. I don't know. There have been surveyors around, taking pictures. Word is that they'll build a dam down by Goodell's Landing, and it could flood all the way up here to Cedar Bar. I don't know how those river trout are going to like turning into lake trout. Oh, well, that's our cue to go. Thank you so much for your time, Miss Davis. You've led such an adventurous life. I'm really excited to add these experiences to our files. Oh yes, well my pleasure. Now remember, we'll have beds and hot meals for anyone who comes a calling as long as I can call Cedar Bar mine. Oh. Great, we made it back here to the present. Thank you so much 
for accompanying me on our latest ACOTUS mission. I always find our historically important people so thought-provoking. I'm curious what you thought was most interesting about our HIP today. Were there any other additional questions you had for Lucinda Davis? What's one other question you would have liked to ask her? As always, I will include a list of resources, books, and websites um, where you can continue learning about our HIP today. And I hope that you take time to dive into these resources. In that way, you can maybe answer some questions that you had and help continue to work on the ACOTUS project. Happy time traveling!